Hi guys, Tom Hunt here in the kit room and in this episode I'm going to be looking at uh, my international setup for pike. I mostly go abroad to fish for pike um, and most of the time I'm actually flying there as well. So today I just want to cover a few bits around what you take, how you pack, what the restrictions are and the best way to do it because I've done a fair bit of international fishing in the past and the thing that m most frustrates me is the fact that you either take only a small amount of kit and you always find yourself undergunned or you end up borrowing kit and it's just it's n like no one likes using borrowed kit, uh, rented kit, it's just really really annoying. So I'm um, just going to take you through what I take, uh, I've thought about it a lot because I do a lot of fishing in uh, Scandinavia, in Denmark, in Sweden, Norway uh, and then I'm just actually off so the reason I'm doing this I'm packing because I'm off to Lake Constance in uh, which is on the sort of Switzerland, Germany and Austrian border uh, for a few days from Monday through to Wednesday and we are fishing for some real dry giants. We're fishing for, uh, well the fish in there go over 135 centimeters. So to put that into context, uh, I've got my old gunky mat here. Um, it only goes up to 130 centimeters because that's how few fish there are in the world that go over that size. All right, but um, I've got two mats with me, so we have to join them up at some point if we get into a real monster. But yeah, they've had them up to nearly 140 centimeters, which is just absolutely colossal. Um, right, to start with, so the bag. Uh, sometimes I drive, if we go over to Rotterdam, Amsterdam, um, any of the s close European countries, I'd probably look at driving, so you can take any bag you want. But um, for Scandinavia and a little bit further afield, you know, so we're going down Germany, Austrian sort of way, uh, I like to fly. Go with EasyJet most of the time because it's cheap. I'll check their restrictions. And this, na this is a Nash Scope coffin. All right. So Nash is obviously, Kevin Nash is a carp fishing brand. Uh, and they brought out some smaller, uh, partly telescopic rods. Um, which are in the sort of 9 and 10 foot range uh, because a lot of the carp fishing now I guess is in smaller lakes and you don't need the long long rods for massive chucks and this is the coffin they brought out so it's about four and a bit foot long um, rather than your sort of if your traditional carp fishing I suppose would be 12 foot rods 13 foot rods and and two piece so six to six and a half foot um, those types of things if you're going on a plane are an absolute pain so um, you've got to check in separate luggage or you've got to put them through as skis or pay extra. But for lure fishing, we obviously use slightly shorter rods and this works an absolute treat. So I can get anything up to a two piece, eight foot six rod in here. So it's just over four foot in length and it's absolutely perfect. I can carry it. It goes straight onto the plane as normal check-in baggage. Um, and as long as it's obviously within my 23 kilo limit, absolutely perfect. So let's get into it. What do I take? Right, uh, it's got three compartments in it and a couple of pouches on the outside. But in the first compartment, I take, um, fits perfectly, one of the gunky, uh, waterproof, safe, safe bags. Um, take that so that once I actually get there, I can take that straight onto the boat that we've hired with my rods, a couple of other bits and bobs. It is pared down fishing, but I've got my confidence baits and I've got exactly what I need to give me the best day. I'm not, I'm not falling short on anything. We normally have to... Um, because of battery limits and weight, um, I don't get to take my Helix 10, which is we normally borrow or um, rent one when we get over there as fish finder because they're absolutely imperative for those waters. Some of them are 25 miles long, you know, absolutely enormous water. So you need to be able to read underwater contours and you need to do a little bit of background research before you get there. Otherwise, it's like fishing in the desert. But um, take, so this is a pared down of what I'd normally take, uh, minus my fish finder, but it gives me enough equipment that I feel really confident that I'm in with a chance of those massive, massive fish. So in here, I've got um, my first little pouch, which has got everything from my Polaroids to wire, um, some electronic scales, because they're nice and lightweight. Um, obviously, unhooking equipment, etc., etc. Uh, wire cutters, a couple of measures, some fluorocarbon, just all of my kind of bits and bobs uh, for everything that I need. Some spare hooks and some crimps and stuff like that. Then I've got um, 
two boxes of soft plastics, five and a half inch, six and a half inch, and then a slightly bigger box, which has got my sort of eight to 10 inch ones in. So most of the time, like five and a half inch is, is fishing small. If the fishing's quite hard or the, the uh, pike are tuned in to slightly smaller fish, um, you've got to remember that fishing in the UK is very, very different to fishing abroad. The only style of pike fishing that I would say is similar in the UK is either up on the Scottish locks where it's big and it's deep and you get away with fishing monster lures because they're big pike or on rivers. So rivers like the, the Stour, the Wye, the Avon, where you can be fishing for 15 to 30 pound fish and you're often using big lures, uh, strong kit, heavy rods, heavy braid you know most of the time because rivers are very snaggy and you've got to try and bully them a bit as well and they're wild really super fit fish um so five and a half is really the smallest i'm going to take six and a half is my starting go-to um so coming in at around 30 to 40 grams for the rubber plus anywhere between 10 and 30 grams for the jig head and the hardware um i will use that on my sort of lightish rod which will be 30 to 80 grams uh, and about a 35 pound braid. Uh, then moving up once we locate the pike. So I'm looking for bites on my five and a half and six and a half inch lures. Um, looking to tr maybe try and get the odd, the odd jack, the odd pull, a follow. Just I want some, uh, want some sort of information on where those fish are going to be because there's massive expanses. So you have to cover lots and lots of water, find the fish first, and then once we get there, I will fish for, you know, typically something like that, which is an eight and a half inch Ilex Dexter or the eight and a bit inch um, Gunky G-Bump. Big paddle tails um, rigged with big, you know, two zero hooks on them, trebles, um, screw in jig heads normally. Sometimes I do fish them, I don't know if you can see that there. Sometimes I do fish them in the, what I call the traditional sort of English way with uh, a big sort of main jig head and then a stinger at the back as well. But even on these, I'm looking at 10, 10 or hooks really for the jig heads. Um, so any of those, any of the big bonnie baits as well, I like those, just big, heavy, thick set lures that are really gonna displace a lot of water. I take a few, um, take a few hard lures as well, mostly for kind of trolling when we're on the way to an area that we might already know. Um, and again, big is best, full of teeth marks this one. Runs a bit shallow six to seven foot maybe so we're anywhere up to 12 to 14 foot that would probably catch fish and we tend to go around the edges when we're on the way to a certain spot um like to throw a lure over the edge troll but anything big i've had three pound jacks on this when we've been abroad um and you know <laughs> well look at the size of it like you'd expect if you got a bite that it would be a minimum of a double but um I tell you what, they're just, they're so wild, these fish, when you go abroad. Um, that's why you have to fish super, super positive for them. Um, made up already a load of normally 40 pound wire or one mil minimum fluorocarbon. Uh, you know, there's a big debate in the UK about fluorocarbon versus wire and blah, blah, blah. But when you go over to Europe, like they barely even use wire. Most companies don't actually even sell wire because they just sell fluorocarbons and hard monos. And as long as it's thick enough, a mil to 1.2 mil, um, which would put you somewhere in the sort of 80 to 100 pound breaking strain, um, it doesn't kink, it doesn't weaken. Uh, if it gets shredded a little bit by teeth, then that's fine. I have heard of people getting bitten off, but like in Europe, they don't worry about that. Uh, it happens on so infrequently that um, they are just fluorocarbon all the way. So I've been, been playing with it a little bit. Uh, and when I go abroad, I play with it a little bit more. But um, I do have 40 pound wire in there as well, or, or the big fluorocarbon uh, hook links. So moving on to the next pouch, I, um, I've got things like my unhooking mat. I've got my drogue for when we're on the drift. Uh, and I've got my reels. I haven't got all of them yet, but they will go in there as well. I normally take two setups. So one will be the lighter setup, sort of a 30 to 80 gram setup, eight foot to eight foot six, absolutely perfect. And then same again, but heavier. So I'll probably go uh, with a 140 rod. Um, and again, I think it's about eight foot, 
fits in here perfectly. The eight foot gives you the extra leverage. I do like putting massive casts in. For me, when you go abroad to these huge lakes, you have to cover water like there's no tomorrow. Once you locate them, it's absolutely fine because you can keep working a certain area, but putting in 40 and 50 yard casts, every single cast, uh, either side of the boat means you're covering, you know, a minimum of sort of 80 to 100 yard wide strip as you're going down the drift, you know. Uh, that to me is absolutely imperative. Um, so yeah. With that, with my reels, I'll fish two and a half thousand or three and a half thousand sizes for the sort of medium heavy and then the heavy heavy. And I'll go with normally about a 35 pound braid and a 50 pound braid. Some people think that's a little bit undergunned, but for me, I like, like I said, those long casts. It's very difficult to put really, really long casts in when your braid is 60 and 80 pound. Um, and to be honest, you're never gonna get broken on, on that, that sort of bre breaking strength as well. Um, then the last compartment is going to be just for clothes. It's the smallest compartment, uh, just a few clothes, change of underpants and your toothbrush. You don't need a huge amount of kit. You go going fishing, I'm going fishing for three days, me and my mate, and we couldn't care less what we smell like. It, for us, it is about wake up when it's still dark, eat breakfast, be on the boat just as the light's coming up, and then you're on the boat until sundown. You go there to catch big fish and you have to put an extraordinary amount of effort and time in. So we don't fuck around, we don't go to a bar, we don't mess around cooking stuff. We, we go there, we sleep, we wake up, we fish for however long the daylight hours are. We then go back and sleep and repeat, all right? So um, that's the best way that we found because um, it's a lot of money and it's a lot of effort to go over there. So I like to you know put the hours in and really go for it. Um, and then, yeah, just in the side pack, pack as well, I've got my nets, I've got, um, normally I like using round nets, but I've got the old 42 inch uh, triangular sort of carp fishing net here, which isn't ideal, but at least I can pack it and it can fit into here. And then I've also got my waistling um, and cradle type thing in there as well. Keep those pipes nice and safe, they need looking after, especially those big ones. And um, yeah, and so fingers crossed, I'm off in a couple of days. Uh, all of, yeah, so I can basically take that and it has all of my luggage, all of my toiletries, all of my equipment and all of the stuff for the boat. The only thing that I don't take and is absolutely imperative, so we either hire one or borrow one when we get out there, is a fish finder. You can't fish these huge places without knowing depths, weed beds, areas, features and um, temperature. Normally, I mean, I'm a hummingbird man. I've got Helix 10. Side scan is the one for me as well. But when we get there, we hire whatever we can kind of get hold of. You just haven't got enough weight restrictions and space to take over batteries, battery charger to charge it up at the end of every day. Um, the screen size, you know, they're 10 to 12 inch, they're 10 inch screen sizes. So 12 and 14 inch units uh, with a big transducer arm and stuff as well. So it's the only thing I, I don't take, which I'd love to be able to take because my electronics find me so many fish, but that's another story. But um, yeah, that's it guys. So just a bit of international few tips and tricks there. If you're gonna do some international fishing, I do recommend it for you guys in the UK. Get over there. Normally you've got to find a guide or know some info before you go, but it's completely different style of pike fishing than you get here in the UK. Um, most of the time in the UK, we're fishing lakes, gravel pits, or trout reservoirs, and they're completely different fish. You know, um, I've had uh, two 20, I've had a 20 and a 25 pound fish from Chew in the last couple of weeks, and I'm catching on the smaller the lure, the better. So basically, like four inch lures. They don't respond well to six, eight, 10 inch lures uh, because they're well fed. You know, over here we have stocked reservoirs. When you go abroad, they are wild. They hit the lure harder than anywhere else that I've ever known. Um, they fight like crazy. They are. They don't weigh as much as English fish. They're longer and leaner. You know, you, to get a 30 pounder in this country, you're probably looking at somewhere around 110. To get a 30 pounder if you go abroad, you're looking at somewhere like 125 to 130, 125 plus. 
you know, they're so much longer and they're so much leaner, but they're wild fish. So um, that's what I really love about them. Most of them probably never been caught before as well, uh, but it is a case of location. The rewards are there if you're willing to put the time in. And so I do do a few trips every year. So I've got my stuff pared down. Thought you might be interested uh, on what I use. And uh, if you've got any questions about you're going abroad or you need any tips, fire me some questions. Perfectly happy to answer everyone's um, inquiries. And uh, until the next video, I'll see you soon.